Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. So your book is called Risk, Originality, and Virtuosity, which you call ROV. Yeah. And that message was kind of, you know, threaded throughout your entire sure. message of, of the stories that you told. First of all, I love speakers who are storytellers, and you're such an amazing storyteller. Well, thank you. Plus, the, good, the cool thing for our listeners to have a visual of this, in fact, if you go to Peter's uh, website, it's just petervidmar.com, yeah. right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Go to your website, and there's actually a video that you can watch of Peter performing a presentation, a motivational presentation, but the cool thing is, and you did it for my group, you, you bring your pommel horse there. I did, yeah. So you're there, you're on stage doing routines here. Yeah, I am. It's not easy as I Are you going to still be doing that when you're 95, uh, yeah, trying Jack, to follow Jack LaLanne? Jack there? is my goal, so I'm going to keep plugging away. We'll see how it goes with him, but I'm not sure. But... Okay, so, so uh, ROV, yeah. Risk, Originality, and Virtuosity. Why don't you explain that to us? Well, it's interesting. My... Uh, First of all, I'll tell you how I kind of got into this, is that uh, right before the Olympic Games began, I called my dad to say that I was in the Olympic Village. And he says, oh, I'm glad you called because my boss's boss would like to know if you could speak at a meeting for us and you know, make a long story short. It was in Bermuda, so I got excited about that, you know, and, and I went out and spoke at, to a company. And I was asked to give a presentation on kind of on innovation. And I thought, well, that's, you know, that's a part of gymnastics judging. And so I put together at that time a very primitive version of what I, for example, communicated to your group. And it's based on a judging category of gymnastics that's become a nice blueprint for life. And I never thought about that until I really pondered, you know, what it is that we're asked to do in our sport to create that perfect 10. So in a nutshell, every skill that we do has a difficulty level or label attached to it. So we have A, B, C, D, and E level skills. A's are the easiest, E's are the hardest. You have to do a certain number of each of those skills. And if you perform your routine perfectly, at least when I competed, the highest score you can get was a 94 well, you want to get that extra six-tenths of a point to get to the ten, and those last six-tenths of a point came in one final category uh, called risk, originality, and virtuosity. You got two-tenths of a point for each of those categories. And so in my sport, I'm required to take risks, required to innovate, to be creative, and I'm required to show virtuosity, to do something to the ultimate, as good as it can be done. And if you do that, in the judge's eye, that qualifies you as someone that's done something extraordinary. And that's what allows you then to reach that perfect 10. And I kind of break down those three things for the audience. Right. I liked uh, when you were, you were talking about how uh, if you want to be a champion, people say, well, you got to work twice as hard. Yeah. And you, you, you kind of share that. First of all, that's yeah. impossible to work. If you're six hours in the gym, you can't be 12 hours at, exactly. in the gym. So. Exactly, exactly. Can I share with us your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, well, for example, when I talk about risk, I think I shared with your group about how we have to take risks in our sport. The problem is taking risks involves making mistakes, you know, and you're bound to make mistakes if you push the envelope. And that's okay so long as you learn from those mistakes. So I think I, I share with you an experience that I had uh, where I fell off the high bar at the World Gymnastics Championships where I had a chance to win the gold medal. That was the story when you went yeah. and, and face I, force. Yeah, I, 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 did this, I did this skill that I thought I had down pat, and I blew it, and I, and I was devastated. But because I made that mistake, I made this commitment, that I'm never going to make that mistake again. And I'm glad in looking back that I failed because it, it helped me to really focus in on those things I had to do to, get, to really get better, not take those skills for granted. And the key I learned with that was, was that I had to give it that little extra effort. I, I went back to the gym every day and worked a little bit extra on that skill that I crashed and burned on so that I wouldn't make that mistake again. And I learned the value of that extra effort, focused every day. And so, you know, we like to exaggerate when we teach people, you know, you better work twice as hard if you want to get better. You better work twice as hard or study twice as hard if you want to get better grades. Well, you know, that's discouraging for someone that works hard to feel they got to work twice as hard. Right. And if, you, if you're an Olympic athlete, you can't work twice as hard. And, and I use that example. If you train six hours a day, I can't train 12 hours a day to make sure that I win because my body would literally fall apart. Mm-hmm. But what I can do is I can train six hours and 15 minutes a day. If I can have some little extra focused energy in one aspect that needs improvement in my life and do that a little bit every day, then over time that adds up. It adds up to quite a bit of time of focused attention on one issue, maybe one problem that over time will cease to become a problem because I spent that extra time on it and improved on it. Well, you calculated that 15 minutes mm-hmm. extra per workout in the gym added yeah. up to how much more in a year yeah, did it, that it add was up to? 90, actually, it comes out to 91 hours a year is what it comes out to, or in leap year, 91 hours and 15 minutes. But anyways, okay. uh, but it comes up to 91 hours a year, and I knew that it's, when, when I got to a world championship competition – uh, or some big event, I wish I had an extra 91 hours to get ready for it, but it was always too late, you know? Because the 91 hours broken down, if an athlete works out three hours a day, 
Okay. And they work out an extra 91 hours. At the end of a year, that's an extra month of training. So an extra month that you would yeah. have had so more I, than your competitors. So that would allow me a 13-month year to prepare for something, wow. not a 12-month year to prepare for something. And so walking into an event, I said, oh, you know, I wish I had an extra month to get ready for it, but it was always too late. So right. if we can just give that little focused attention. And, you know, it's easy when you feel like it, but it's really difficult when you're not, when you're having a bad day. 